the Stuart 10V steam engine rebuild part 4, painting the engine using genuine Stuart green paint, which is very good to apply. As with any painting job, it is all in the preparation, and the first thing I need to do is thoroughly clean all these parts and degrease them. For this, I put them in a plastic tub on the bench and pour on some standard cellulose thinners. A caution on this one, cellulose thinners is not very nice stuff to handle and it doesn't smell too good either, so you need to do this in a very well ventilated area. My weapon of choice for this job is an old toothbrush. It gets into all the nooks and crannies and it is really important to make sure there are no particles of oil left on these components before you paint them. After thoroughly degreasing these components, I left them on the bench just to dry. I'm going to paint the body of the engine with this stuff, it's Stuart Green, from Stuart Models. This is an old tin of Stuart Green and it came from the era when Stuart Models were in Guernsey. It isn't cheap to buy, but it's the correct colour and as far as paint goes it is very good quality. I'm going to paint the flywheel first and there is an imperfection in the casting but I'm not going to fill it because I want this engine to be a sympathetic restoration. Normally I would fill this imperfection but in this case I am not going to do that. A couple of the castings on this engine are not all there should be, particularly the cylinder casting, where the inlet ports on the port face are far too shallow. And from my experience I've never seen this before but there's a first time for everything. I will need to make some modifications because the ports are not right. I'll do that in a future episode. For the moment, it's painting all the way. Some viewers may be puzzled why I don't use primer. Well, I generally do not use primer on steam engine castings for a couple of reasons. One being that the surface is rough enough to hold the paint. And the other reason is, if you put primer on first, followed by a top coat, and then chip the paint, that's a lot of repair work required to fill the indentation. Once the painting is finished, if it does get chipped, it's very easy to repair, because it's a thin layer of paint. Whereas if you built up the paint with primer first, it's a much thicker layer of paint, and repairing the paintwork would be more difficult. In my case, I've painted rather a lot of Stuart engines over the years. And to be honest, I don't always use Stuart Models paints. I use Phoenix Precision Paints Great Western Railway Green, which is very similar to this. Sometimes I use Humbrol Green. A lot of Stuart Models have been painted using that. As you can see, this is just the painting of the flywheel and it takes a long time. The video is running at double speed, so I think it's time for me to stop talking and just play some music over the rest of the video. Painting the main body of the engine took considerably longer than painting the flywheel. I would, as always, like to say stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you find it useful. I will leave you with the rest of the video accompanied by some of my music. This is one of three pieces that I composed many years ago. I originally wrote it to accompany an amateur dramatics production of Alice in Wonderland that I've always personally seen as a bit of a drug-induced horror story. Anyway, it frightened the children, so I had to change it. This piece is called The White Rabbit.
I almost forgot, after painting it's very important to clean your brush. I'm using some acetone that I bought a while ago for repairing some ABS plastic parts. It's good stuff for cleaning brushes too. What I'm going to do to finish off this video is paint the small S logo on the steam chest cover. For this though I'm not using Stuart Green paint, I'm using Phoenix Precision Paints Buffer Beam Red. It covers quite well, but you won't get this in one go. Don't try and get it in one go. If you put too much paint on, it will crack once the engine gets warm. It will definitely need a second coat once this has dried. To finally finish this episode, here are some shots of the paint drying. Thanks for watching. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.